Hey, what's up? This is Harry Wagner from Harry's Situations, and today I want to talk to you about what to look for in a tire and a wheel for your vehicle. So whether you have an overland rig, an ultra four car, something in between, we're going to talk about things like tread patterns, construction, width and sizing, loads ratings. So stay with us to learn anything and everything about tires and wheels. Bam, 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 As luck would have it, I have some brand new Nitto Recon Grapplers mounted on my 2014 Ram here. So we're gonna use those as an example. This video is actually brought to you by Nitto Tire, but a lot of the tech we're gonna talk about applies to really any tire and wheel combination out there. The specific example I'm running on my 2014 Ram here are 37 by 11 and a half R17 Nitto Recon Grapplers mounted on AV Salta HD wheels that are 17 inches in diameter and eight and a half inches wide. Now, Nitto just dropped a ton of new sizes of these recon grapplers, so they're not just limited to the 20 inch plus wheel crowd anymore. They've probably got a size that fits your vehicle and some really unique sizes like this 11 and a half inch wide tire that's 37 inches tall. You wouldn't think an inch would make that big of a difference, but it does. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is tread patterns. And admittedly, people often pick their tread design based on aesthetic. And I get that, the same goes for wheels. You know, you want something that looks cool, but you have to understand when you're looking for tires and you're looking for wheels, you're often going to have to make compromises. So you need to consider things like, what is your vehicle weigh? What sort of terrain do you encounter? These are all factors when you are shopping for a tire or for a wheel for that matter. On one end of the spectrum, we've got mud terrains like the Nitto Trail Grappler, the Mud Grappler that we showcased last month on Dan Aguilar's Jeep. Those have really deep tread depth and they have huge voids. So what that equates to is a tire that provides really great forward traction in soft surfaces like sand or mud. They also work really good in the rocks where they can claw forward. Now the trade-off is those big voids mean that they generate a fair amount of noise. They also aren't great in snow and ice because those big lugs are not siped. So siping are little slits in the tires. The reason you wouldn't want siping is if you're spinning the tires, something with sipes, you might tear the lugs off. The rest of the time, if you're on the road, say in snowy or icy conditions, those sipes allow water and snow to escape. They allow the tire to be on the ground, keep it from hydroplaning. They also allow the carcass to run cooler. They allow the tire to conform to the terrain. So there's definitely trade-offs when you're looking at things like that. So in the middle of the spectrum, we have all-terrain or even tires now like the Recon Grappler, the Ridge Grappler that kind of blur the line between an all-terrain and a mud terrain. I recently replaced the Ridge Grapplers on my truck with these Recon Grapplers. And the Recon Grapplers have pretty big shoes to fill because the Ridge Grappler is a great tire. It has that deep tread depth like you have in a mud terrain, but a little tighter pattern. The voids aren't quite as big. So some of the features and qualities of an all-terrain. And the Recon Grappler is not that different, but it, I would say, takes things even to the next level. So you have these really deep tread depth, which is great. It's gonna be a long lasting tire. It's gonna claw forward and give you plenty of traction. The voids aren't as big as you see in a mud terrain tire. Uh, there's some really advanced features in these tires too, like they do have siping in them, like an all-terrain, uh, with variable depths, which prevents them from tearing if you spin them. They also have, if you look down in the tread of the Recon Grapplers, there's a little groove along the bottom. And what that does is, instead of having a flat surface, it really prevents mud or snow, anything from getting packed up in the tire. So it's going to eject that. When you're clawing forward for traction, it's really gonna help you when you're in those situations where you need it most. Load range and load ratings are something that are often misunderstood and it's understandable, it can be a bit confusing. A load range, like a load range D in the case of these tires, uh, a load range C all the way up to E, F, really equates to how much air you can put in the tire. So a higher load range tire will accept more air safely. Like a load range F tire, you can inflate safely to 80 PSI. 
Um, these are load range D, so the maximum inflation pressure is 50 PSI in these, but that's different than your load rating. So each of these tires is rated to carry almost 4,000 pounds a piece, which is great in the case of my Ram that weighs 11,000 pounds. Got plenty of extra capacity. I don't have to have a maximum inflation pressure to go down the road, which is nice because it makes it ride a little better. Uh, and I've got a safety margin there. But if you look at, Nitto makes this same tire, a recon grappler, in a 33 by 12 and a half for a 17 inch rim. It is a load range F. This is a D. You would think, oh, it's gonna carry way more weight. But in fact, those are rated to carry just 3,525 pounds a piece. So 450 pounds less than the tires that are on here, even though it's an F, you can inflate to 80 PSI versus this D, you can inflate to 50 PSI. That's partially a function of the volume of air in the tire. So in the case of like my Ford truck that has 42s on it, those are a load range C, which you would think, oh, this 7,000 pound full size Ford, you don't want a load range C tire on. But being a 42 with that huge volume of air, they actually carry quite a bit each and have no problem on the Ford. Similar to load rating is light truck versus standard load or P metric, which stands for passenger tires. Uh, most larger tires will be an LT or light truck tire. These have much heavier construction than a standard load or a P metric tire. But again, there are compromises and trade-offs. So for instance, if you buy a new Toyota Tacoma, even if you get a TRD off-road, it will come with P metric tires. And the reason Toyota does this is that they're lighter, they're less expensive, they have less rolling resistance. That equates to better mileage. The good news is the easiest thing to change on a truck is the tires. And a Toyota Tacoma is an incredibly capable platform. I actually took one recently and changed out the stock size tires from P metric to an LT tire. They weighed nine pounds a piece more per tire. We lost a mile and a half per gallon, even with the stock size tires by going to a heavier construction LT tire. So that heavier construction though, if you're off-road, you know, it's gonna be more puncture resistant. It's not gonna bruise if you rub it up against rocks or you hit something at speed. So there's always trade-offs there, including tire construction. These sort of specs, really all of the specs you would ever wanna know about a tire are on the manufacturer's website. So if you go to nittotire.com, you can see the weight, you can see the recommended wind brim width, you can see the overall diameter, uh, the section width, or the tread width, which are different things. All those specs you can find at nittotire.com. Another thing that's often misunderstood is tire sizing, particularly metric sizing. Now in general, the metric system is easier than Imperial because everything is based on multiples of 10. With Imperial sizing, it's very straightforward. This is a 37 by 11.50 R17 tire. So it's 37 inches tall. It's 11 and a half inches wide. That's the section width, not the tread width. R stands for radial. It's on a 17 inch rim. Now metric sizing is not nearly as straightforward. Take a 285 slash 70 R17 tire. So the R17 is the same. It's a radial, it's on a 17 inch rim. Rims are still in inches, even in metric tire sizing, because we're in America. But the rest of it's complicated. So 285 refers to the section width. A 285 tire is gonna be wider than a 265, but narrower than say a 315. And if you remember your math, there are 25.6 millimeters in an inch, or 2.56 centimeters in an inch. Multiples of 10, right? Then we go to that next number, the 70. So 70 refers to a percentage of the width that makes up the sidewall. So it's 285 wide, 70% of that is on the top and the bottom to make up the sidewall height, and then that rim is 17 inches in the middle. So a 285 75 17 is gonna be 5% taller sidewall than a 285 70 17, but it's still gonna be the same width. Uh, that first number refers to the width. Now if we compare a 285 70 17 and a 265 70 17, those are gonna be entirely different in both width and height because that first number, the section width is different and everything else is based on that. Now wheels are just as important as tires when you're doing fitment and particularly backspacing, which we'll get to in a minute. Wheels like tires, people often pick based on aesthetics and I get that, but there are a few things you wanna look for when shopping for a wheel. One is weight. 
I was looking for wheels for my Tundra recently and I was surprised to find 17 by eight and a half wheels in a six bolt pattern that ranged from as light as an advertised 22 pounds all the way up to like 36 pounds, which is a huge variation in weight. And again, a lighter weight means better acceleration, better braking, better fuel economy. So you often have to pay more for lighter wheels, but in my mind, it's worth it. There are very lightweight wheels that are forged, but they typically cost an order of magnitude more than cast aluminum wheels. That's like what these AEV Salta HD wheels are. Just like tires, wheels have weight ratings. So even if you have a tire that can carry almost 4,000 pounds a piece, if your wheel isn't rated to carry that much, that's the limiting factor. It's the weak link in the chain. Now, in the case of these Salta HD wheels, these are designed by AV to be specifically on a heavy duty Ram truck. So they actually do support 4,000 pounds a piece. The other nice thing is that the backspacing is specific to this vehicle. So backspacing and offset are related topics. Uh, they're not the same thing. And you'll find that they make a big difference in what you can package and fit. You could have the right wheel diameter, the right wheel width, but if your backspacing is wrong, you can have a ton of rubbing issues. Another aspect that is often confusing for people is backspacing and offset. So these are related topics, but they're not the same thing. Backspacing is measured off the inside of the wheel. So if you have an eight inch wide wheel with two inches of backspacing, there's two inches sticking in from the mounting surface and six inches sticking out. If you have a 10 inch wide wheel with two inches of backspacing, you still have that two inches going in from the mounting surface, but now you have eight inches going out. So as the wheel gets wider with the same backspacing, all of that width comes to the outside. And shallow backspacing typically results in a lot of scrub. Uh, oftentimes if you have narrow axles, they rub at full lock, you'll see people that run wheel spacers or they run shallow backspacing. And that's understandable, but there are compromises there. A better solution is to have a wider axle, more backspacing, and that'll allow the tire to turn on center. You don't have as much scrub. So in the case of these wheels, they're eight and a half inches wide, and they actually have over five inches of backspacing. As that relates to offset, offset is measured from the center line of the wheel. So if you have an eight inch wide wheel, that has zero offset, there are four inches to the inside and four inches to the outside. If you have a 10 inch wide wheel with zero offset, you have five inches to the inside and five inches to the outside. Positive offset pushes the wheel inward. It's the same as having more backspacing. Negative offset would be the same as having less backspacing. Does that make sense to you? I sure hope so. If not, comment below and let me know how I should have better phrased this. Oh, cut that part out. Ugh. If you've been this patient, you know that one topic we haven't discussed yet is tire pressure. Everyone wants to know what pressure should I run my tires, whether it's on the street, whether it's on the trail. And unfortunately, the answer is it depends. But I'm happy to share with you the parameters that it depends on. It depends on your vehicle weight. It depends on your wheel width relative to your tire width. It depends on your tire construction and how stiff it is. It depends on the terrain that you're going on. So in my case, I run 50 PSI in these tires on the street, which is the maximum inflation pressure that is recommended. I just got these. I'm still kind of playing around with the pressure and figuring out exactly where they should be for even wear. But typically when I go off-road, if I'm running 50 PSI in this example, I'll cut that in half when I go off-road. So I might go down to 25 PSI. What that does is makes a larger contact patch in contact with the ground. Uh, it smooths out the ride and gives you better traction. In my Jeep, I only run 30 PSI on the road. So when I go off-road, I cut that in half to 15. I feel like that's a really good starting point. Um, you can go less, particularly if you have beat lock wheels. You can incrementally drop it at say five PSI at a time. And the great thing is when you're going and you're doing these experiments, it's an excuse to go off road, which I never need. In the case of this 37 by 11 and a half R17 Nitto Recon Grappler, another spec that Nitto will run on their website is the recommended rim width. In this case, it is seven and a half to 10 inches wide. I'm in the middle of that at eight and a half inches wide. And 
I typically like a rim on the narrower side. I find that it retains the bead better when you air down or you go off road. Uh, the compromise there is potentially the tire will crown. It might wear out in the center faster than it would otherwise if you had a wider wheel. But a narrower wheel I feel like is a little easier to package. They weigh a little less and they retain the bead better. So that's typically my preference is to air on that narrow side when it comes to wheel width. That's it for this episode. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about tires and wheels. Comment below and let me know if there's anything I forgot. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching Driving Line. If you guys like this video, consider subscribing to our channel so you'll never miss any of the content we create here. Whether you're into trucks, Jeeps, imports, domestic vehicles, or anything in between, we are here to fuel your passion. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.